Okay, said so I wasn't gonna make a travel video, but this this needs to be heard. And it's a beautiful day right here in Puebla, Mexico. This is three reasons why you're gonna run out of money when you're traveling. And I, I would never want this to happen to you, so I want you all to avoid, helping you guys to avoid some pain right now. And after hearing this, it might change the whole way you look at everything. And feel free to use this even in your normal life if you're not traveling. So the number one, re or not number one, these are three, and this is not financial advice, by the way. But one of the main reasons you run out of money is because you're saving it. I know it sounds a little crazy, but one of the reasons you're running out of money when you travel is because you're saving it. Meaning that you, you have this lump sum, the way people say, and then you travel, then it just dwindles down. Now, if you full-time travel, this is not a sustainable way. And what happens, what that does is when your money goes down like this, what you don't realize is not only do you feel the trauma of loss, anytime we lose anything, we start to feel like, oh goodness, we start to live our life completely different. We eat completely different. But when you're saving it, what happens is even if you don't even use it traveling, you're losing. You're losing 7%. I read an article, inflation's at 7%, meaning if you had $100 January 2021, that $100 gets you $93 worth of stuff right now. It's a big deal. It's a big deal in the macro. In the micro, people don't realize that the prices just go up a little bit, that's all. But in, on, on the, the scale, of, on, a, on a big scale, it's a big, big deal. Now we're gonna walk through here, this little park. I'm gonna give you the second reason. I didn't write these down, so they're coming off the top of my head. Buying myself some time to remember the second one. <laughs> Whew. Got it. So the second reason that you're going to run out of money, the second reason is because you're not managing it. You don't manage it. You kind of spend it. You kind of know what you got. You kind of think you'll be okay, but you don't manage it. And the problem, when you don't manage something, you can't, when you don't, when you don't measure something, that's what I meant to say. When you can't, when you don't measure something, you can't manage it. So it's not even, maybe not even managing your money. You're not measuring your money. Meaning you don't know how much you have. You don't know how much you had. You're not sure what's coming in. You're not calculating expenses. Now I don't mean to do it all in a way that's like, you're like, you are obsessed with it. But I mean in a sense of, wow. Okay. Hold on. But I mean in the sense of you don't even know. You don't know your numbers. So I'm gonna give you a question right now and this question might change the way you look at things. I want you to imagine you have to lose a little bit of weight, okay? You gotta lose some weight. What's the first thing you should buy? Some of you who have followed me or been in any programs, you know the answer to this. But I'm asking you right here, the audience, I'll give you a second to think about it. You wanna lose some weight, What's the first thing you buy? Or first thing you get? A lot of people answer is healthy food, water, but a scale, a weight scale, a weight balance. You need to see how much you are. You need to see how much you, how much you have to lose, where you want to go. So when you don't measure your money, you're, you're not measuring it, you can't manage it, especially when you're traveling. So this is the second thing. And the third thing, which is probably for me in my eyes, the most important is when you're only saving, if you combine the first, if you're just saving the money and you're not even managing it and measuring it, the thing that's going to make you run out is because you're going to be such a mindset of scarcity in such a mindset of scarcity. That's going to filter all through your physiology. What that's going to do is it's going to do something crazy to you. Anytime you have any expense, if you're traveling full time, trust me, I I've been traveling full time for a few years now. And before that was living overseas for 13 years before I decided to do full-time, full-time. And one of the things is when you have things that come up unexpected, when you have a decision you have to make that you can't really plan for and you can't be ready for, you never could have saw it coming. And those moments when you, have, when you combine the two, you don't know how much you really have and you only are saving, the biggest thing that you're gonna have is it's gonna freak you out. It's gonna bring, it's gonna fire off things in your nervous system and you're gonna, you're gonna make, anytime you feel that, you're gonna make decisions based off of a very short term, like your, your, um, um, your fight or flight. It's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do, I, I have this huge expense come up. And I promise you it will when you're traveling. I would never want it to, but it comes up all the time. I can think of $500 that came up for me last week that were totally unexpected. 
I didn't know my visa was running out, or I guess I knew it was running out, but I thought there'd be a better way to get it done. But in the end, my gut feeling was telling me not to go with that way that all my people that I knew were doing. And I took a different route to do it. And when I did that, it ended up costing me a last minute 200 and I think it was $260 flight. And then I, being there, it cost me another $100 for a hotel. Then it cost me another 60 bucks to get a, um, um, I rented a little room for a few hours. Then I had to get another 30, 30 $40 for another flight. And that was totally unexpected. And if I had been just saved, having money that was saved, if I'd only saved money, what that would have done to me is it, it, it freaks you out and it takes away your experience and it becomes such a normal state of, for you to be in. You become in such a normal state of being in the scarcity, of kind of hoarding everything, just saving it because there's not enough. And what it does over time is you forget that there's unlimited resources out there. There's unlimited people that can help you out there. There's unlimited videos, there's things you can consume, there's people who can help you. And all that gets thrown away when you're in like, no, there's not enough. There's not enough. And that does something to you. I've worked with people, I've talked with people, I've been that person where I was just saving every single dime, everything. Now, we can end the video here, but I don't wanna just leave you with this, the things to avoid, to help you. I wanna give you just a little simple, simple thing if you if you like this video give you one or if you liked what i said if it really hit you here's a simple thing you can do now like i say it's not financial advice you need to get your money moving i'm not saying start a business where you have money coming in all the time that's great as well but you need to have your money somewhere where it's moving it has to be somewhere where it's moving by the way i'll show you guys a little bit so you don't have to stare at my face the whole entire time but your money should be moving. And when I say your money moving, it means when you look at your account each day, you should, your money should be moving. You should have one, two, I think, personally, I think two at, at the minimum, accounts that they go up and down depending on the day. Because it's invested in a stock, a mutual fund, an index fund, um, in crypto, things that I'm big on. Now, this is, this is a little bit deeper maybe than <laughs> for YouTube, but some things that I've done, I'll give you one example of something that I do and feel free to take this and run with this for yourself. I'm, I, I like, personally, I like mutual funds. But on that, you guys know I'm really big in crypto. I've been big in crypto for like two years. But one thing that I started to do is I started to stake the US dollar coin. There's platforms where you can stake it. I don't want to give you guys one. I, I'm not promoting anything. I have nothing to sell you today. But you can stake money. You can stake a US, the US dollar coin at 8%. So one of the things that I do is I have the US dollar coin staked at 8% that's paid out daily, which compounds weekly. So that's money that just makes money. And I tell you that that's a way that I do it. That's one of the ways that I do it because I tell you that because this is the energetics of what you want. You eventually wanna to get to a place where your money is making you money. So many people don't know this. I didn't learn this until I was, I don't know, late 20s. Like your money has to be making you money without question. If you die, you should eventually have a million dollars. That's, that, that's a, a, a very simple way for you to look at it. it. Means if you die today, eventually you'll have a million dollars in an account. That's a good way of, of gauging it. Meaning you should have it in some kind of place where you're making money. Whether you left it in a stock and you died and, and people look at it 600 years from now and it's had a million dollars. Because I'm gonna tell you one thing and feel free to check this if you're not American, check it in another account if you like or check, check your account. Look how much money you're making in your savings account. I think some people have no idea. Putting money in a savings account loses you money. I think a high yield savings account, I looked at it in a program that I was in, I think it's at 0.05%. And I think 0.05, if you had $1,000 in there, I think at the end of the year you make $20 from that $1,000. Not even, you make $5 I think. From that twenty dollars, from that thousand dollars, where there's places where you can put your money, where it makes your money. I'm telling you, that's what people do. People who are wealthy, this is what they do. Now, asset allocation, all that stuff is a whole other story, another ball game. I want to keep it very simple here for you. You have to put it somewhere where it's making money for you. I don't want any one of y'all to, to be broke or stay broke or feel like you're stuck and you don't know what to do. Have it somewhere where it's moving, please. Because the world's getting more crazy. 
the more I look at it, the more I, I'm learning, the more I realize, like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. You can't print this much money. You can't have all this stuff going on, all these shutdowns. People have lost so much, but things are still going okay. A anyone here who's in any kind of financial space, you might even realize something's off here. And I wouldn't want y'all to be in a space where you're not prepared. So I hope you got something from this video. Um, I think one of the best things that we can do, I tell people this all the time, is we all can get super rich. I, I, I truly believe it. I think if we all got super rich, we could help out so many people. We could help out the causes that we believe in. But we have to first start taking it seriously. We have to first realize like, if you only work a job and that you get a paycheck from that job, you'll work until you die. That's the end, that, that's how it goes. You'll work until you die. You have to have the money moving. And just that peace of mind, knowing that you have money somewhere that's working. I think one, one book that I could recommend to you is The Richest Man in Babylon. It's a great book, I've read it a few times. One of the, it, it talks about that. You wanna look at your money like little soldiers. I don't know if they said that in the book or I, I listened to someone tell me that. You wanna look at your money like a soldier. Meaning you get this money, you get $5. And most of us, we spend the $5. I want you to look at your money like you get five soldiers. Okay, use the three, four soldiers, but put one soldier away. And that soldier goes and recruits more soldiers. And that soldier goes and recruits more soldiers. And we don't bother that. We leave that to let it go. This is how you need to start thinking. I'm telling you right now, that a lot of the people that I've spent time with and taken, learned from, they don't live off of their income at all at all tax purposes so many other purposes time purposes their money is making the money and the money that their money makes is what they live off of but it's a step by step some of you guys who watch my channel who are 20 17 25 30 34 <laughs> all of you guys are super young you have time when it comes to investing it's all about time someone who's 20 20 years old, someone who's 18 years old and invest $500, $400 or $300, I think, a month for 10 years and never invest another dollar again. And someone who is 35 years old and invest $300 a month for the next 40 years of their life, the person who invested when they were younger has so much more money. I think if you do the math, I think the person who invested early, that person has over a million dollars. I think 1.4 million, I could be off, you can do the math yourself. And the person who invested later at 35 has like 600,000. Now that's still nice, but the person who has the 1.4 million, I think, or 1.5 million, they didn't put any more money in. It was 10 years, that's it. If I could tell myself something 10 years ago, it's no matter what, find a way to put $300 a month into an account and let it go. Whatever you can spare, if it's $100 and $50 and let it grow. Because once compound interest hits in, you're going, to be, you're going to be good. And it's going to be working for you. I want you all to have your time. And if you're constantly working for money, when do you get your time? The video yesterday, we talked about how much time you get. You get 28,000 days if you're lucky. And if you're watching this and you're young, you're full of energy, those 28,000 days aren't necessarily all, hey, I'm young, going to the party, going to the club. Some of those days, some of those last maybe 15,000 days, 10,000 days aren't like that. So you want to be able to have the time free to spend with your family, to travel, to do what you want. If I'd only saved money, I promise you, I would not be able to do what I do. It would put a lot more pressure on my business. It would make me, it would change the way I looked at things. I would have been very in a scarcity mentality. Because I don't have a, I didn't have a goal to travel for two months or for four months. It was never a goal like that. I wanted the lifestyle of it, to have the options. But without having these things, if you don't, if you let these three things I said, if you let these things, if you don't avoid these, if you if you really just start saving, if all you do is save your money, you just do the other and do the other two. I can't even remember exactly. I'm look, get, looking at all these people staring at me <laughs> walking through this field. You don't measure your money and you stay in a scarcity mentality, it does something to you. And it does something to you which keeps you scared and keeps you small. And what that does is that keeps you from expanding who you are and what you're capable of doing because of your, you'll be so timid. Things, big, it, big risks that you might need to take to have the success, you don't take 
because you're in that scarcity mindset. And doing that for years and years and years, it just becomes a brain pattern. There'll be videos that I have coming out of here talking about the corporate mindset. A lot of my clients are in this, this corporate mindset of thinking that it has to be this way. It has, there's gonna be approvals and it has to be checked by five or six people. But when you get into the world of creativity and the world of just, of your world, it doesn't function like that. I can make one video like this and, and all of a sudden it, it could change lives of millions of people without anyone ever approving it before I did it. I recorded this literally on my phone and uploaded it. That's the world we live in. We have to take the limits off that were put onto us because we weren't born with them. So I hope you got something from this video. Um, I appreciate all of you guys who left comments yesterday. I read through all your comments, it really meant so much to me. Um, I really want the best for you. I don't want you to be broke. I don't want you to be unhappy. I don't want you to be not at peace. I want you to have the life you want. I meet people when they're in their best moments of their life traveling. And then they go back to their normal jobs or their normal life and I end up talking to them and they're like a completely different person. And that's one of the inspirations for this. I don't want that to be you. So hope you got, some, got something from this. Thank you for being here. Thank you all so much for watching. And on that note, from a park here in Puebla, Mexico. <laughs> Hola, amigo. Where they just play with their family. Little girl's crying. I don't know what happened. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> and the carrots are just laughing. I love it here. <laughs> They're so family oriented. I love it. I love it. I think the guy works at this place right here. But they just spend the whole, they spend the whole day with their family. That's what life is about. But on that note, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Any other questions, comments, leave it in the comment section. I'll get back to you soon. And I'll speak to you all later. And in the meantime, everyone always remember to work hard, be brave, and don't forget to smile. Ciao.